9.30 a.m. Shanghai. The picturesque bund fading in the background. As the day progresses, traffic builds on the busy highways of the city. The sun comes out by late afternoon, the mix of oxides of nitrogen, sunlight, an unburnt fuel produces a thick smog characterized by high levels of ozone and peroxyacetyl nitrate. Here you can see the very high levels of ground level ozone at four o'clock in the afternoon and the characteristic gray haze which is not a sign of rain but of the thick smog that covers the city. Welcome again. Today we consider topic 5.7 Urban air pollution as we state the source and outline the effect of tropospheric ozone. We outline the formation of photochemical smog and we describe and you will evaluate the pollution management strategies for urban air pollution. The troposphere, that thick layer of the atmosphere closest to the surface of the earth. On average it spans about 15 kilometers being thicker at the equator and thinner at the poles. But it's within the troposphere that all of the meteorological or weather phenomena occur. It's where you find rain clouds and it's also where you find urban air pollution and photochemical smog. Let's return to the streets of Shanghai to understand the mechanism by which photochemical smog is formed. In large cities with large amounts of urban vehicular traffic and industrial activity, it is not uncommon to find a large buildup of nitrogen oxides as a result of nitrogen and oxygen reacting in the heat of combustion chambers. As the day progresses in a large city, this nitric oxide is able to combine with oxygen to form nitrogen dioxide. And it is this which in the presence of sunlight breaks up into nitric oxide and the single atom of oxygen. The single atom of oxygen is then able to combine with diatomic oxygen or O2 to form the most significant component of this nauseous urban air, ground level ozone. When day fades into night, the ozone would disappear as a reverse reaction happens, only for the process to begin again at rush hour the following day. It's important to note, however, that photochemical smog is a mixture of about 100 primary and secondary pollutants. Ground level ozone because it's formed by a series of steps involving the combining of pollutants and is not directly emitted from the vehicles is classified as a secondary pollutant and so is peroxyacetyl 
nitrate or PAN formed as a result of nitrogen dioxide reacting with oxygen in the presence of hydrocarbons from unburnt fuel like pentane to form this eye irritant which is another significant component of photochemical smog. But added to these two secondary pollutants are a range of primary pollutants including particulate matter that foul the urban environment. Ozone is a toxic gas and an oxidizing agent. It can damage crops and forests and irritate eyes and cause breathing difficulties and increase the susceptibility of human beings to infections. It's a highly reactive material and it can attack fabrics and rubber materials like this brand new tire. Once it gets exposed to the urban air, cracks and weaknesses will begin to emerge. Ozone also affects plant life and vegetation and as a result crop productivity will decline in the presence of high levels of ozone. The frequency and severity of photochemical smogs in any area depends upon its local topography. Do you have hills surrounding the city? Is it nestled in a valley? How much precipitation or rainfall does it receive? And most importantly, is it characterized by the presence of thermal inversions that trap the air with the layer of warm air trapping the city air or cold polluted air moving in at certain times. It is this factor more than any other that ultimately determines which cities are plagued by smogs and which ones are spared its severe effects. Cities like the capital of Mexico, Sao Paulo in Brazil, and of course Beijing in China are all notorious for their high levels of photochemical smog. What then are the options for managing this problem of photochemical smog and urban air pollution in general? In thinking about management solutions, it's always useful to think about technical solutions, behavioral solutions which involve influencing people to change their behavior, and then of course the legal fix which requires enforced legislation to ensure a certain kind of behavior on the part of industry and the consumers. Shown here is a classic technical solution that has been employed with some success in managing the problem of photochemical smog. The catalytic converter which employs two principal materials to treat the components of smog. The platinum catalyst removes hydrocarbons like pentane converting it into carbon dioxide and water and the rhodium catalyst converts carbon monoxide and nitric oxide into nitrogen and carbon dioxide. It's important to note that the catalytic converter is not helping with the greenhouse effect because as you can see in these equations carbon dioxide is an output in both cases but what it does achieve is it prevents the key components that go into the production of ground level ozone from getting into the air. So it does address the problem of ozone and photochemical smog but at the same time it does not and it's important to note it does not help in managing the greenhouse effect because it simply converts one substance into another and in so doing it does manage urban air pollution but not
the greenhouse effect. And it's for this reason that other strategies are being considered. Strategies which include using alternative forms of transport and using public transport. As you can see, bikes made available to the public for hire here in Barcelona, Spain. And bus and public transport using alternative fuels in the United Kingdom. These are just some other strategies which can manage the problem of photochemical smog. People need to be educated and at the same time they need to be given financial incentives to utilize public transport and to utilize bicycles. Another more recent technical solution is the hybrid car which conserves on the consumption of fuel by charging a battery while fuel is being consumed to allow periods of use with the battery would bring relief to the atmosphere operation of the car without the release of pollutants. Other administrative strategies that have been employed to manage the problem of vehicle emissions and photochemical smog are having HOV lanes or high occupancy vehicle lanes like the ones shown here where cars that carry two or more passengers are allowed preferential roads. In other places like on the island of Bermuda laws that limit the amount of cars per residential address and high taxes discourage the use of large automobiles a car of this size, for example, would bring a very high annual tax to its owner and only one car would be allowed per residential address, bringing great relief to the commuters on the tiny island in the Atlantic Ocean. So now that we've considered some of the strategies for management of urban air pollution, including administrative strategies, influencing people's behavior in different ways, putting laws in place, and of course, viable and affordable technical solutions like hybrid cars and catalytic converters. I would like you to evaluate and to remind you that evaluate means to look at the strengths and the weaknesses, to evaluate the list of management strategies presented here.